Greetings, friends, and welcome to my guide on Sephiroth Extreme. This encounter requires a lot of raid healing, proper positioning, and adopts team jump rope. There is also a hardened rage, which is rotation based, starting in the final phase. I will be going into each of the mechanics as we make our way through the phases. I'm sure there are many other strategies that work just as well, but these are the ones we learn to best suit our playstyle and composition. All right, let's get started. The first phase will last from 100% to 64%. During this phase, he will use these abilities. Triple Trial, a heavy hitting physical frontal cleave. To Ferret, moderate damage magical attack hitting the entire raid. The next mechanic is composed of two parts, green orbs. These orbs are small in size, but expand greatly over 10 seconds. If a player stands in them, they will suffer high damage against stacking vulnerability up stacks. Stacking circles. Two big circles will go out, one over a random DPS and one over a random healer. This indicates the attack must be split with at least three members per circle. Each attack gives a stack of physical vulnerability up for six seconds. This mechanic is relatively simple. The green orbs will always spawn in a cross-like formation with one side missing. Move the boss to this side. Immediately after, the two stack circles will go out. Have all DPS stand on one side, while the healers and off tanks stand on the opposite. This will solidify everyone's position and make things really simple. After he jumps on both groups, the green orbs will disappear. Move the boss back to the middle. Chez, or cheesed, whichever you prefer. Uh, this is mechanic damaging ability dealing massive damage. This must be mitigated. Following this, a single green orb will spawn. Stack on that side to bait out the cleave, Ain. Once the boss's location for Ain is set, Rats and AoEs will go out, take the red directly behind the boss, and spread out making sure not to overlap anyone. Two people will not get Ratson, so they are free to stand in the AoE without risk of killing others. You can assign positions if people are messing things up, uh, but ideally you want two on the boss while all others are spread out around the red in the back. Upon reaching 64%, you will transition into Phase 2. During this phase, big adds and little adds will spawn in waves. The order is big and small, then small, then big, then small, then small. Whenever a big ad dies, it will explode for 10k raid-wide damage. The small adds explode for 2k. There are a lot of different kill orders or variations to do this, but the order we found best was small, big, Small, small, big, small, small. Make sure to get healed up before killing big adds. This phase is pretty simple and the DPS check is low, so there is plenty of time to stagger killing of the adds. Once all adds are dead, Sephiroth will begin to cast his ultimate and this will transition you into phase 3. Upon entering this phase, Sephiroth will be stationary and have no positionals. This phase follows a very strict rotation and will always adhere to it. Yasad. A yellow flash will happen followed by a stone spike coming out of the ground dealing moderate damage and applying a damage down debuff. 
simply stack up to bait all the Yasad in the same location, then move out to dodge. Shortly after, Sephiroth will give the entire party either an orange or green buff. The orange is used for towers that spawn, and the green is used for taking tethers. He will also begin to channel an orange and green orb called Life Force and Spirit that will split the arena in half. You must stand on the correct side depending on what color you have. Later in the fight, when your colored buffs fall off, it won't matter what side you stand on. These tethers are for the people with the green buff. They need to grab them off people and get real close to the front of the boss. If these tethers aren't grabbed by the green buff players, they will kill the original target. Towers. These are meant for tanks or people with the orange buff to grab. So basically, after the colors are assigned, call out who is getting which tower to make things easier. If the towers aren't grabbed, they will explode, dealing massive damage and apply nasty debuffs. While all this is happening, there will also be four green orbs expanding in the center of the arena, so if you aren't up front grabbing tethers, be very careful while dodging these by either going to the south or to the side. After the green orbs disappear, there will be another set of towers, so be sure to grab them if you have the orange debuff, followed by green and orange orbs, so get on your appropriate side. Sephiroth will then place a marker above a DPS and a healer, similar to Earthshaker. This attack is proximity based, so the farther you are away, the less damage it will do. This is then followed by Yasat, so you will need to stack and move in a specific way to avoid and minimize damage here. There are many different strats to do this, all being equally effective, but here are a couple different ways to accomplish this. After this, he will cast Dat, which hits the tank and random people for splash damage. The damage on the tank is high and should be mitigated, while the damage on the party is moderate. You'll want to spread out and make sure not to clip anyone. Towers will go out again, dealing high damage. The tanks will have to get these. If you used a cooldown for that, it will be up for these towers. Life Force and Spirit will go out again, followed by Yasad. After this, he will pummel the arena and ping pong you back and forth. He strikes the arena three times, starting from the north, then the west, then the east. There are a couple of different ways to handle this mechanic. When deciding which way to get knocked, you simply look south to see if there is a green orb. If not, get knocked south, then back to mid for second and third knockback. If there is an orb south, then you'll have to get knocked to the west. Another strat is to always get knocked southeast on the first because there will never be a green orb there. Both strats work just as well. The goal is to never be knocked into the green orbs. After ping pong, there will be more earth shakers followed by Dat, Yasad, Tank Towers, and Life Force and Spirit. After this, stack up in front of the boss because he will do a pushback. Make sure people are topped because this pushback does high raid damage. Once pushed back, two sets of ads will spawn on the left and right side, as well as the storm of words directly in the back. The tanks will pick up the ads and tank them where they are, while the DPS burn down the storm as fast as possible. During this, raid damage will go out and towers will spawn that will need to be grabbed by the tanks, as well as the Assad happening shortly after the towers. The raid should dodge to the middle for Yasad. Make sure not to dodge too early and grab the towers if you're a tank. 
Ray damage will go out again, so be sure to kill the adds properly because they will explode dealing more damage to the raid. There will be one more Yasad, and more raid damage will go out, so be sure to bait it out and handle it properly. Shortly after this, Sephiroth will slam his arm onto the platform, pushing raid members back slightly. The storm of words will now become a safe zone, so be sure to stack inside. The raid will be blown up in the air to dodge his arm, and then the whole phase will repeat. Upon reaching this point, you have seen the entire fight in its rinse and repeat. Well guys, I hope this guide was helpful, and will lead to some sweet first clears. Peace guys.